Hello, Jess Too Good here, and today I'm going to compare the LEGO NES with the actual NES. Now, this is an NES from 1985, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the first Nintendo console release in the United States, and this is the LEGO NES from the LEGO Nintendo Entertainment System building set, which was released this year for $230 in the United States. Now, I'm going to be comparing this controller, the cartridge of Super Mario Bros., and the system itself because those are the ones that are easy to compare. Now the actual set of the LEGO NES also comes with this TV, which has a really cool play feature where spinning this part moves Mario on the screen and that can even interact with the LEGO Mario system. But that's not something I can compare because I don't have an old CRT TV. And this one is something that seems to be LEGO's own creation, just inspired from various CRT TVs. So let's just take a look at the actual NES versus the LEGO NES. Putting the two systems side by side, right away you'll notice that the LEGO NES has a lighter color of gray at the top. That's not the problem of the LEGO NES in accuracy. Rather, this is something that's a problem with my NES and a lot of other NESs. If you guys didn't know, these would get sun damaged very easily and mine got yellowed pretty quickly. Though when I bought it, it was pretty yellow. I did buy it you, so take that in mind. I have a gray version that's like a little bit lighter and everything that was a little bit better kept. It doesn't work as well plugged in, but that's at another location. And this is the one that means a lot more to me. But comparing the two, also you'll notice that the size of the Lego one is a lot smaller than the size of the actual one. This is just a scaling thing. And I think the sizing and everything is captured so that nothing is missed in downsizing it, even with the details like the cartridge and the controller. Perhaps these changes become more evident stacked on top of each other. The replication with the Lego version is pretty interesting on what specific parts they capture. This part at the side right here is about the only detail on the side area compared to the details at the side of the actual NES. At the back though, I love how they capture some of these ports. The ports for the AC adapter, channel switch, as well as the AF switch are captured almost on par. The only difference I would say is the AF switch doesn't have that white border around it, as well as the channel switch not being able to click into place. Not that that's a big deal because this is a very excellent replication, comparing it to the actual one. As I said, the channel switch clicks into place, which was something I used to like playing around with. And I say captured almost all the buttons because this part right here is meant for the expansion port, which was never used in the United States. Compare it to the bottom of the NES. The Lego one's underside is a bunch of undersides of plates, while the actual NES has more components. So this is the dip that leads to the expansion port. A part that's overlooked by many, but this was something that wasn't ever used in the United States. Ew, I gotta clean that, ugh. But putting that back on, you can see some other details clearly aren't captured, but there are actually a, a nice use of dips here in the Lego version to capture just a little bit of those, I guess, tunnels or whatever that lead to the expansion port. They also don't have the bumper parts here, which maybe could have benefited with the Lego version, but then again, it would have looked a little bit weird at how much this raises up on, I guess, a table or whatever, maybe. I don't know. I like the ports at the back for the AC, AF, and channel switch. The audio and video get a printed piece, which is a one by four tile. Very interesting piece to get printing on. And the builds for the ports specifically have those one by one studs with the holes in the middle, and also these Technic cylinder pieces that kind of replicate the metal around those ports. I love the replication there. But with this side, it really becomes clear that these little indentations aren't on the Lego version. That's kind of a shame. I just noticed that this one on mine is really high up. As for the front, oh, it's actually kind of funny how well this lines up with the lid. There's a lot of tile replications with a 1x6 with the Nintendo logo, Entertainment, 2x4 with System, another one of printing with plates on the side with the 1 and 2. Also, the power and reset buttons use tiles, which are 1x3s. Really cool replication there where they have just a tile on some studs a little bit forward than the rest of the console. So it looks like it's not pushed in, but you can't actually push those in like the actual Nintendo Entertainment System. The power button pushes in on the actual one to be more specific, but the reset one just kind of resets into place. 
I do like how they replicate the button as well with that one by one on a smoky tile. It's translucent and only shame with that is that when you turn on the Nintendo Entertainment System, this goes red. That doesn't happen <laughs> with the NES version, obviously, and they don't include a tile to switch out. And the whole play feature imagines that the NES is on. The lid lifts on both of these and Lego does it with a clip connection. Very nice replication. Also, the tray inside for the cartridge works almost as well as the Nintendo version. I do find that sometimes it gets stuck into place, but it's kind of a mind-blowing play feature. Basically, pushing it down, this T-panel slides into place from LEGO Technic. And once that's into place, you could push it back up. I say it's not as efficient because you do have to wait for that T-panel to slide into place. That takes like five seconds. It's not a big deal. In regards to putting the cartridge inside, after you blow it, just slide it inside that cartridge slot and you push it down and it stays in place. It's the same with the original version. I love the feel of the cartridges, by the way, but we'll get to a close up of that later. And just push it in, slide it into place, and there you go. As for the tops of the console, I love how LEGO replicated the vent part right here where they use some carefully aligned plates. Still has that nice feel when you run your hand down there, just like the actual NES. I also like how they did the black stripe as well with some tiles. And the LEGO one uses a bunch of these six by six tiles, actually six to be specific for that top part. And it does look a little bit, I guess, noticeable, but I don't know if it would have been better if they built it up using like two by fours or two by threes. So it's not really a complaint. And one last thing for the consoles, Lego version has an Easter egg on this side where if you lift up that panel right there, you have the end of world one, two from the original Super Mario Bros. The controller build is nonetheless impressive as the NES itself. The design of both of these come close in size if you put them side by side. The LEGO version has a lot of interesting build techniques with the start and select being that handle piece in black. Also, the 2x2 two two tiles they use for B and A are bigger than the actual NES controller. They do kind of scale this so that stuff like the Nintendo logo here is centered. On the controller, you can see it's much higher than the buttons than on the LEGO version. All that modification makes it look more accurate than it may be side to side. There are some great tiles with prints like that Nintendo logo one on the 2x4, 2x4 or select and start, 2x2 two two around the directional pad and even the 1x1s one ones around the directional pad. I love little details like that that really capture the look of the actual controller. For the wire, they use an interesting Technic piece which just kind of goes in the build inside the controller. You can see it, those connections up there. And it's kind of hard to tell which one is which. This is the actual NES one. You can see that it's a more hard material, I guess, or a less glossy material than the cable here, which means this cable very easily picks up dirt and little specks of dust. I really love how the LEGO version captures the cord at the end, or I guess the plug at the end to be more specific, where they use this roof tile piece, the one by two there for those triangular sides. Also for the plug, we have these hinge connections, which is made that way, not really for accuracy, but rather so it could connect to the NES itself. The slot for the LEGO NES actually uses clips, which just go along with the hinges, not to the point where it's stuck in place, but so that it could easily be removed, but is still kind of firm in place. And then the one for the actual NES just slides into place with those seven pins. And there you go, it's connected. And much like the underside of the NES itself, the controller backside doesn't have the indentation that the actual NES controller has. For the cartridges, clearly the LEGO one is downsized. And this one uses a sticker for the label, which kind of makes sense because the label on the actual cartridge uses a sticker. Though those are two of the three stickers of the set. This one's on a 2x6, this one's on a 6x6 six tile. I do like how they have the side indentation parts where it's not totally accurate in the number, but using these tiles is making it to represent something that you recognize right away. And I think that's a good job on Lego's part. There's no label at the top, unlike the version on the actual cartridge. Now, I'm not sure if they could have printed right there or if they would have done a studs not on top technique. 
I understand. And then at the back, you can see they have that indentation continuation, but like the other parts, there's no stick or anything here. It's just the underside of plates. And while you don't need to blow on the LEGO NES cartridge, I do like how they have a green plate inside there to look like the chip with all the information of the game on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison between a LEGO NES and an actual NES. This was just really something I've been wanting to do because I love the NES so much. And to have it in LEGO form as an official set was a total surprise and just a mind blower. Let me know what you guys think of this video. And if you guys have an NES or Lego NES in the comments below, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.